Brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue reading from the Patericon at the Kievan Caves Monastery. Discourse 10, the decoration of our Venerable Father Theodosius' coffin. After some time, Georgie, the son of Simon and grandson of Africa, wished to decorate the coffin of our Venerable Father Theodosius, which he did. He sent one of his boyars named Vasili from the town of Suzdal to the caves monastery in the God-named city of Kiev to plate the coffin of the Venerable Theodosius. Georgie gave him 500 grivna of silver and 50 grivna of gold to plate the Venerable One's coffin. Having received this, Vasily set out unwillingly on his journey, cursing his life in the day he was born, saying to himself, what gave the prince the idea to waste so much money? What reward will he get for decorating the tomb of a dead man? Just as this wealth was gained for nothing, so it has been thrown away for nothing. Woe is me, since I alone dare not disobey my Lord. Why have I left my home? For whose sake am I making this unpleasant journey? By whom shall I be honored? I have not been sent to the prince or any other magnate. What shall I say? What words shall I utter to that stone tomb? And who will give me an answer? This and many other similar remarks he spoke to those who were with him. The Holy One appeared to him in a dream, saying meekly, My son, I wanted to give you a re the reward of your labors. But if you do not repent, you will suffer many troubles. But Vasily did not cease grumbling, and the Lord inflicted much, much misfortune on him. Because of his sins, all his horses died. Their clothes were stolen, and the thieves took everything except the treasure chest, which had been sent with their baggage. Vasily opened the treasure chest, which had been sent for the decorating of the Holy One's coffin, took from it a fifth part of the gold and silver, and spent it on his own needs and to buy horses. He did not realize that God was angry because of his blasphemy. When he came to Chernib, he fell from his horse and injured himself so badly that he could not even move his arm. Those who were with him put him on a boat and took him to the outskirts of Kiev. It was then evening. That night, the Holy One appeared to him saying, Vasily, did you not hear the Lord saying, make to yourselves friends of, of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. My son Georgie pondered well the Lord's sayings. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. You were about to receive a crown for your labors, since no one has received such glory as you would share with him. But now you are stripped of everything. Yet do not despair of your life. There is no other way for you to be cured except by repenting this sin. Give orders that you are to be carried to the Kiev Monastery to the, to the Church of the Holy Theotokos and placed on my coffin. You will recover and find untouched the gold and silver which you have spent. This was revealed to Vasily that night, but not in a dream. It was in the evening that the Venerable Theodosius appeared to him. The next day, Prince Jury Volodymyrovich came to see him with all his boyars and saw that he was seriously injured. Very grieved on this account, he departed. But Vasily had faith on his in his vision of the Holy One and gave orders to be taken to the cave's monastery. While he was on the riverbank, a stranger went to the superior and said, go quickly to the riverbank, bring Vasily here and place him on the tomb of the Venerable Theodosius. He will give you a treasure chest, charge him in front of everybody with having taken a fifth of it. If he repents, give it back to him. Having said this, he disappeared. The superior looked for the man who had appeared to him, but no one had seen him enter or leave. He went to the Dnieper, took Vasily up the hill, and placed him on the Holy One's coffin. Vasily stood up, his entire body whole and well, and gave the superior 400 grivna of silver and 40 grivna of gold. My son, where is the remaining 100 grivna of silver and 10 grivna of gold, said the superior. Vasily then began to repent and said, I took it and spent it, 
Give me a little time, Father, and I shall return it all to you. I wanted to hide my theft and not reveal it. I thought I could conceal it. I thought I could conceal it from God, who sees everything. Then he shook out the money from the vessel in which it had been sealed, counted it in front of everybody, and found it complete. Five hundred grivna of silver and fifty grivna of gold. And they all glorified God and the holy Theodosius. Then Vasily began to tell them everything in due order about his vision and the Holy One's deed. The next day, the prince came to the aforementioned place, bringing his physicians with him to cure Vasily, but did not find him. When he learned that he had been taken to the cave's monastery, he thought that he had already died. He rode quickly to the monastery and found him well, as though nothing had ever ailed him. And when the prince heard from him about these wonderful miracles, he was awestruck and filled with spiritual joy. And he came and prostrated himself before the miracle-working tomb of the great Theodosius, then departed. When a chilarch, Georgi Simonovic, heard about this, his devotion to the Holy Theotokos and the Holy Theot Theodosius increased. And in addition to his many gifts, he gave a grivna containing the weight of 100 grivna of gold and wrote the following letter. I, Georgie, the son of Simon, the servant of her most holy lady of the Theotokos and of the holy Theodosius, who received a blessing from his most holy hand, once suffered for three years from a disease in my eyes and could not see the rays of the sun. By his word I was healed, for I heard from his lips, see, and I saw. So I write this letter to the last of my family, lest any of them be separated from the house of the, of the most holy lady, the Theotokos, and from the venerable Anthony and the Theodosius. Even if any of them should come to the last stage, stages of poverty and cannot make any gifts, at least let them be buried in, in the villages of this church, since the prayers of Anthony and Theodosius give protection everywhere. For once, when we were advanced, Against Isjaslav Mitslavik with the Cumans, we saw a high town in the distance. We at once marched against it, although no one knew which town it was. The Cumans were fighting beside it, and many were wounded and fled from the town. Later, we learned that it was the village belonging to the caves monastery of the Holy Theotokos. There had never been a town there, nor did the people of the village understand what had happened. But when they came out the next morning, they saw the bloodshed and marveled at what had taken place. So I write to you, all your names are inscribed in the prayer of the Holy Theodosius, who promised my father Simon that he would pray for us just as he prays for his monks. My father told me to place this prayer in his hands when he was about to be laid in his tomb, since he had set his hopes on the Holy One's promise. My father once appeared plainly to one of the God-bearing fathers and said, Tell my son Georgie that I have received all blessings through the Holy One's prayers. Do you too, my son, strive to follow me in good works, and whoever, whosoever does not want the prayer and blessing of our Holy Father Theodosius and inclines away from him, he loves a curse, and may it come upon him. For this reason, his great-grandsons have an affection for St. Demetrios and have their own place there. If any one of them should reject it, they will be under the curse of their fathers and ancestors because of their own free will, and they rejected the prayers of the Holy One and the blessings and promise of our Venerable Father, Theodosius.